I haven't had a day off for a long, long time. And I absolutely love what I do, and that's probably part of the problem. So I have this project called Expedition 1000. The idea is to do 25 different journeys of 1000 miles or more, each one using a different form of non-motorised transport. And when my parents bought me a pair of swimming goggles for Christmas, that started the idea going. I'm from the UK. There's no river big enough to swim a thousand miles there. So my instant thought was, okay, let's look for a big river in the Americas. And then I just thought about the Missouri. I was doing these journeys for soul food for creative reasons. But it came to the point where I thought, OK, I'm ready for another journey, but I think this one can make some noise. I've always raised money for charity. I've always had that option open, but it hasn't been my driving force, and it still isn't. But I have a huge amount of love for Copperfield and what they do. Chris, who founded it, is a good friend. And Sarah, who suffered from breast cancer and is in charge of our fundraising, raising that £100,000, that $150,000, is her prime objective. I knew that a lot of people would want to be involved, and I didn't have uh, the people right there beside me before I opened up applications to say, hey, come on, join us. Everybody who applied really wanted to be involved. The ones I selected, quite simply, were the best applicants. They're looking after me. They're my guides. And that's a big responsibility. It's always a huge, huge worry. And it was from the very beginning. But I'm delighted with them. Every member of the team is valuable. Um, and they're just as important to this expedition as I am. That's why they're all up there during that talk. So getting there to Cedar Shores and having the chance to introduce everybody, that, that was the icing on the cake. We're all exerting ourselves hugely. It doesn't matter how long the day is, it doesn't matter how tired we are. We need to set up camp, we need to be comfortable, we need to be able to sleep well. And we need to go to sleep with a full belly. We put up a lean-to, a communal shelter, where we eat together. Everyone gets their hammocks and or tents up. They're all fairly independent. And so far, just even a couple of days into the expedition, they're all reveling in their roles. And you'd be surprised to hear that they hadn't known each other for a lifetime. People are the most important thing about all of these adventures. Take the Feltmans, for example. We had a rest day on day three, forced because of high winds. We thought we'd be sheltering away in a little copse by the Missouri. And then along come two people, walking along the banks of the river, and you always kind of prepare for the worst. It's like, what are you doing on my land? Get off. And then an hour later, they come back with five gallons of water for us and an extra pickup truck because I knew we were going to be here all day and the extra pickup truck was for the entire team to go up there, be fed, be given coffee, an amazing lunch, charge up our gear, have showers. I'm relying on people to look after our team that I've never met before and they're doing it through the kindness of their own hearts. There are some aspects of these journeys that just won't happen. They won't come together without the support of certain people. It's the people that make these journeys and they were a part of them. There have been times on this journey where I've been pretty close to breaking point. Um, the physical exertion and subsequent exhaustion that I've experienced has been like nothing else I've ever been through. Towards the end, we had just two weeks of 
blisteringly cold weather and those last couple of days so close to achieving our goal the water was utterly freezing and I was in there for 12 hours a day. The idea of getting hypothermia that close to the end of a trip is, well it has to be unthinkable. I'm cramping, I don't know why my stomach cramped up but I hadn't experienced that, but slowly I'd been going downhill, I'd been vomiting a lot in the water. I just thought warm thoughts, basically. I was determined not to let the cold beat me, because if it beats me, it beats the team, and they've put too much into this, and I've put too much into this. You gulp some tea down, you get back in the water, take a few more strokes, and get warm as soon as you can. And then today, the finish. Um, it was a beautiful day because I'd done a thousand miles, that was my aim and we moved slow and just swimming into the arch and seeing the arch and the sun come out just as we got there for the first time in days. That's a good moment. I'm so delighted to have finished the journey with a really happy team who just have worked their butts off. That's what it's all about. We had our issues, we had our struggles, but we've also had amazing moments. We've met so many cool people and it just brought out the true nature of adventure. Miles has invited us to a football game on the day that we finish. An incredible friend for the week that we've known him. He's done so much and ideally we'd be resting, I suppose, but at the same time, the team fly home tomorrow. And I think our mantra is say yes more. So. We weren't going to say no. We're here for such a short period of time. I don't understand why people would waste that time being unhappy. That's not what it's about. I want to get to be an old man and look back and have a lifetime of memories and smile about them. And if I'm living in a tent, I'm living in a tent. I don't want to get to be an old man and say, oh, I could have done more. So I'm not going to. But if stars should shine by the very first time, then it's fine, so fine by me. Cause we can give it time, so much time. Give it time, so much time with it.